Lady Walker Show. Welcome to the Lady Walker Show. I am Lady Walker. We have a Jim Dandy of a show coming your way. My guest is a renowned public speaker, a financial literacy expert, and he is president of Optimal Capital Management LLC. And his mission is to empower people to recognize their financial freedom. Welcome to the show, Mr. <laughs> Ryan Mack. Thank you for having me. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. We had somewhat of an interesting conversation mm -hmm. before we came on air. All right. And I just some, something of interest. But you are here because you are going <laughs> to put on a meeting, a financial seminar, yeah. Thursday, March the 15th. Let's talk more action. Okay. Um, the whole purpose is, uh, especially in black and Hispanic communities, we've done too much paralysis of analysis of the problem. Uh, so we have to figure out how we can have some tangible solutions to our problems. And that's no more, what we need. No more empty blanket statements or, em or empty rhetoric about uh, grandstanding. And, you know, you go to these town hall meetings and you sit down and, you, and, and after you leave the town hall meetings, people are clapping and cheering and going on crazy. But then they leave there saying, okay, now what am I supposed to do now? So it's, it's time for us to start developing tangible plans of action. The paralysis of analysis needs to stop. Uh, and we just have to have really get, and it's based on the financial literacy. We teach financial literacy with our not-for-profit as well. And this is the core is based on financial literacy, but we've expounded the definition of financial literacy to not only uh, to talk about the basic stocks, bonds, business, real estate, but also discuss how uh, incarceration relates to economic empowerment, how uh, education reform is a necessity in economic empowerment, how uh, you know, different things like unemployment are, relates to economic empowerment. You right. can't get any more tangible than that. So jobs, incarceration, education are also included in these discussions. And in the 13 cities we've been going to across the country, we're highlighting some of the best solutions and also giving solutions of our own. How many cities are y'all well, what's your goal? How many cities have y'all have been to? Thirteen. Well, well thirteen. Cities? So thirteen we're uh, attempting to go to, but we might go more. We uh, yes. we just we just took on Austin, um, which is our thirteenth city. But again, uh, we might be going back down to D.C. We might be going to Miami. We might but be going to Charlotte. But you're all the way from where? New York. Yeah, I live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, all the way to Jackson, yeah, Mississippi. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll, to really educate. The tour came. It was birthed when. Um, you know, I sat on the, uh, the panel discussion for the poverty tour with uh, Tavis Smiley and Cornell West. And, you know, they're in my hometown and they came through with their poverty tour. And uh, for two hours, they talked about poverty. And for two hours, they said the same thing. And, and they talked about poverty and how it exists in my hometown. And, you know, and they highlighted it and they really increased awareness of poverty. But it doesn't take two hours for, for anyone to say or to notice that poverty exists in Detroit. <laughs> for real. I can say poverty exists in Detroit in about two seconds. So for the rest of that time, we should be worried about solutions. And so no solution yeah. no was solutions. offered? It was one sister that stood up and she said, I'm a social entrepreneur. And she said, well, uh, you know, I'm here, Dr. West. You know, I'm here. What, am I, what are we supposed to do? You know, you called me out here. And Dr. West said, well, my sister, you, uh, <laughs> we want to have a revolution. And she said, well, I'm a part of the revolution. I have a business. What, we, what am I supposed to do? I'm, I'm with it. I want to be a part of this revolution. And he said, well, my sister, we want to have an awakening. She says, well, I'm already awake. <laughs> I have a business. W what sort of solutions are we, can we provide? And then they said, and Tavis Smiley chimed in and said, look, if you're looking for a bullet point agenda of what we want to do, then that's not the place. What we're trying to do is just increase awareness. Really? And I, again, I, that kind of, that resonated with me. Right. Because we have gone through the, we, we've we looked at it, you know, and it's the Sankofa bird. You know, it looks, the, the head is looking backwards, but the majority of the bird is moving forward. So not to say that history doesn't have a place. There are definitely times when I, I've learned from Madam C.J. Walker. Me too, love her. Yeah, you know, she said, that, why do you want to be the African-American millionaire? The more money I make, the more people I can help. You know, so these sort of things and learning from history are, are certain is how we're supposed to learn from it so we can move forward and use this information to apply it and to create solutions. Because people right now, 
are screaming for solutions. They're screaming for ideas that, that's in, in the individual's head to say, I want that idea to come out of your head, uh -huh. to put it on paper, to write a plan, and implement it. Because from this idea, jobs are created, empowerment's created, the circulation of the dollars created in our communities. So all these things come together in, in stagnation, only worried about what happened in the past. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Exactly. So this is where you and your group come in. Yeah to offer to give some solutions. Absolutely. So come Thursday, yeah. March the 15th, mm -hmm. you are going to be supplying some solution. Yep, at Jackson people. State, 1400 uh, John Lynch Road. I mean, uh, you know, but we've, we've seen, if they go to uh, lesstalkmoreaction.info, again, that's lesstalkmoreaction.info, you'll see different uh, uh, economic empowerment initiatives that are already created in different cities. We've been through Atlanta, we've been through Minneapolis, we've been through Detroit and New York. Um, and we, these are, we've, signed, we've seen so many businesses that are doing so well that are creating not only jobs but opportunity for other people. You know, when people talk about financial literacy, they usually talk about it from their internal perspective. But financial literacy for me and, and there is really about getting yourself in a better position financially so you can give back to your community more effectively. I mean, we do a lot of work with gang members. We do, we've helped over 2,000 formerly incarcerated individuals in the, in the New York City area come out of prison and get jobs through the training that we take. Because you know in what, prison. that's interesting because I'm pretty sure with some people get out of prison, especially guys, it's pretty challenging to get a job. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what, if people just learn how to maximize, and a, a huge part of financial literacy is learning how to maximize the resources that are currently in, in existence. So we do nothing more as a not-for-profit organization. I was on the board of this organization called Rebuild, uh, headed by Darnell Canada, who recently just passed away, rest his oh. soul. Um, but we essentially just went around the community and attached uh, these organizations, HPD, uh, H Housing Preservation and Development, and Commalert, and all these organizations that provide job training, BEOC, the Brooklyn Education Opportunity Center. The resources are there, you know, and so what we try to do is help folks understand. A lot of times as folks, uh, you know, and I'm a, I'm a biblical person, okay, so, and when I pray, sometimes we pray, we ask God for things, mm -hmm. but sometimes what we need to learn how to do is just thank God for things that he's Amen already given that. us. And if we just learn how to maximize and use our own tools and resources that we already have, because God doesn't get, seldom gives a finished product, you know. Right. He may give some material, he may give some steel, but he didn't give us his chair. So in other there. words, all your ducks are not lined up in a row the way you would like for them too. Exactly. Well, I mean, like he, he might give a tree, but he didn't give us that book. You know, we have to right. use our tools mm -hmm. and resources. And this is something that we certainly want to talk about your yeah. book. But what we are going to do is take a break. Absolutely. And we are going to come back and talk a little bit more about you and what you are doing. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back. Lady Walker Show. We are back with Ryan Mack, president of Optimum Capital Management LLC. Thank you for having We were us. talking, much obliged, we were talking about a variety of things and we have a lot more to talk about. But I want to talk about this book mm -hmm. because I didn't know you had written a book. I kn knew that you had co-authored yeah. a book with Kevin Powell. Yeah. Yeah, we wrote, uh, well, I wrote a book, I wrote a piece of the book, The Covenant in Action with Tavis Smiley and wrote a piece of the book with Kevin Powell, uh, Black, Black Male Handbook. Well, this is my latest project, uh, Living in the Village. Living in the Village. And it's, it's a financial literacy book, um, you know, it, but I realize that, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, uh, you know, various authors, Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, Lee Jenkins, uh, Relay Burkett, all these authors that are financial literacy. Um, but I realize that the majority of people don't read financial literacy books. There's a smaller segment of the community that reads the financial literacy books. So I wanted to try to write something that a broader demographic right. would be able to read, uh, as well as all, of all levels. And, um, you know, we've gotten endorsed by Christy Hefner. We've gotten endorsed, uh, Hugh Hefner's daughter. We've gotten endorsed really? by John Hope Bryant, president of um, uh, Operation Hope, Roland Martin, uh, Alfred Edmond, uh, Willie Horton, the baseball player, the Hall of Famer. Um, so, uh, from a, uh, Ali Velshi from CNN wrote the forward. So we got a, a lot of good support from a lot of individuals who are knowledgeable, um, and they all pretty much have said the same thing: that this book can be applicable to anyone, whether you know a lot about financial literacy or know very little. And the reason is that we uh, at about 80% of the book is my strategy to how to accumulate wealth from a variety of perspectives. And I'm a professor, I'm an adjunct professor, and I've created personal finance courses um, throughout the communities uh, for different various colleges, but 
Twenty percent of the book are about thirteen testimonies of individuals yeah, from all. I think testimony yeah. is one good thing that I like. Exactly, because when you're people, reading a book, you certainly like to hear about testimonies. People don't like. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not. I don't have enough uh, large enough ego to think that I, I I can write that book that all of a sudden everyone's just going to want to read what I wrote. I mean, most individuals do. They like to read testimony. That's why the chicken soup edition mm -hmm. became so famous because yes, it is. they like hearing stories and analogies because they can compare it. So we went out. We found 13 individuals who really told some phenomenal stories. We, a gang member that we helped form a business with, he wrote a testimony, a single parent, my, my mother, uh, she wrote a, a testimony of how she had to struggle raising two children of a very limited level of income, subsidized living at certain points. Uh, you know, my brother, he wrote a, from a, him, him and his wife from a spousal perspective on how him and his wife get together and be, it can become that unit, being fiscally responsible to a teacher, to uh, a young mentee. Uh, one of my mentees, uh, Akil King, he just called me about a year ago and said, Ryan, I got an uh, offer from Apple Computer to make about 115000 a year, 300 stock options, $17,000 signing bonus. And this wow. is a kid from the hood who's an orphan. You know, at seven years old, he lost his mother, didn't ever knew his father. Um, when I met him, he was 16, going from house to house, but we helped him form a business. He, we helped him get a scholarship in the, uh, to uh, Hampton University. He enrolled into a five-year program and graduated with masters, his masters in five years. So he was a brilliant young man, uh, but happened to use financial literacy as a tool to overcome adversity. That's great. And uh, I mean, he's working across the table from folks who are 10 years his senior, who graduated from Harvard with masters. But he's, you know, again, 10 years younger, making just as much as them with the same job. So uh, that is very, it, it, just, it just shows the level of what financial literacy can do when you apply it correctly. Because mm -hmm. a lot of folks think financial literacy is all about just stocks and bonds. It's so much bigger than that, man. Oh, it is. Okay, I guess that's that small mindset yeah. that actually have to get out of the box to, yeah. to, to realize that there are more exactly. to it. I mean, we have to throw away the box, man. No more in the I box I know, because it will keep you confined. Exactly. You'll miss out on really living. A absolutely. I mean, you know you know where you can find the most ideas? Where? In the cemetery. Because wow. Because people, people pass away and they keep their ideas with them. And what, our, what this tour is really about and that, what that book is about is saying, you know, we have to unlock the potential inside of individuals because even thinking selfishly, I want all the blessings in the world coming to me. And I don't want, and I understand that as Martin Luther King said, that I cannot be all that I ought to be until you are all that you oh, ought to be. Oh, that is great. And this is the interrelatable structure of reality. So our successes as a community are linked. And I rise, as I rise, we rise together. I went over to South Africa and we did some work. And uh, I saw on the board of one of the classes, it said, none of us is as strong as all of us. And it resonated with me because that is truly true. I mean, that, at the end of the day, how we interact with one another and understanding that the bonds and the unity that we use to empower each other, that's where the true empowerment comes from. And living in the village is really all about making sure that we all do our part as we live in this village. If it takes a village to raise a child, mm -hmm. the strength of the children depends upon the strength of the village. The strength of the village depends upon the strength of each individual member of the village. So. Self, community empowerment and self empowerment should be you're not synonymous if you remove greed and selfishness mm -hmm. from the equation because uh, I need to empower myself and the benefit of empowering you and that's the ultimate goal to make the world a better place. Well that's great. Now we are going to cruise ourselves on over to some of your accomplishments mm -hmm. or even or <laughs> I can term it achievements okay, okay. but I looked at so many. You, I mean, I'm not going to probably go over all of it. That's fine. But I just want to make mention of some of them. You were, you have been, well, you do it now regularly, regularly viewed on GMTV. Mm hmm And that's a weekly thing? Well, no, GMTV is uh, showing over in London. Oh, uh, really? So every once in a while, maybe maybe like once every other month I'll be on there. Okay. But, but CNN I'm on weekly. CN, CNN. And Fox and uh, CNBC. CNBC. Yeah. BET? Yep, yep. Done a few times on BET. And when you are on there, you are discussing economics well, and it social all depends a few issues times financially? On BET and on Black Enterprise, I do a lot of work with Black Enterprise. Um, usually economic issues. Uh, sometimes we'll talk about political issues on CNN and how it impacts the bottom line. Usually I'm like the talking head for economic empowerment, financial literacy. Uh, so, I mean, that's my passion. I, th I think that um, once you find your passion, I mean, this is the way that I, I, I'm... 
I can talk about financial literacy. This is something that you all day, always man. had a desire for. Yeah. Growing up. Well, my mother used to tell a story when I was uh, three or four years old. She would give me a quarter, and I would walk around and then, and I would hold this quarter for like uh, for hours. And she would come back to me and she would say, "Ryan, what you holding in your hand?" And I would say, <laughs> "My quarter." And so she knew from then that, you know, this guy loves money. Um, but then I learned when I was on Wall Street, the reason I left Wall Street, I was a, a stock trader at the largest NASDAQ trading firm. And I was making good money, but I wasn't helping my people. My aunt called me one day and she said, Ryan, what is a stock? And I realized that that resonated with me because my own family didn't know this information. So I, I quit and I decided to go and start my own financial planning company. Or I, before that, I got an offer to work with the, the, one of the largest prestigious financial planning firms, but then they told me I can only work with high net worth individuals. So I declined that offer. Now what does that mean, high net worth individuals? Individuals who are worth uh, usually a million dollars or more. Oh, that you can only, that you I can, can only, only work, work with them. Yeah. So really? they're essentially saying I can't even work my, with my mother. You know, because uh, so my that, mother. So there was a limitation. Right, oh yeah, absolutely. On what you can do. Yeah. By working with them. Because my family, none of nobody in my family is high net worth. You know, <laughs> I, I come from Detroit, and we don't come from high means at all. Um, but I read in the Bible it said, "Do not withhold good from those who deserve oh, it." Oh, I love that scripture. Hold that. But it is that, in your power to that, act. Hold that. Yeah. We are going to take another break, and we'll be right back and let you finish. No problem. This. We'll be right back. We are back with Ryan Mack, financial literacy expert. Now, you were talking about something that your mom said. Yeah. But then you said, then you quoted a scripture out of the Bible. Yeah, Proverbs 327, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. I think that's one of the most powerful scriptures. Well, I've had a few favorite verses in there, but that one really said to me that um, I did not have to take this job at this, at, at this financial planning company only to work with high net worth because I have it in my power to give it financial literacy to those who deserve it. Um, and you know, and I was told many times you can't build a financial planning company based on working with individuals who are poor or low income. And it is very difficult. I'm not going to say I've had the, most, the easiest route at all. But you know, we've done a pretty good job at getting and teaching those in low income housing. That's, that's when our not for profit came into play. But you know, it's so good that you saw differently because somebody has to be willing yeah. to help those who are not on the high end. Yeah, I mean, I, we were people talk about Occupy Wall Street, man. We were doing this movement back in 2004, years before. It, it's really because we just saw a need, low-income individuals. I mean, at the end of the day, you have financial planning companies that they only focus on high net worth, and if they don't do that, they really are product pushers, trying to sell you things that you don't even need, like an extra insurance or extra stocks for individuals who can hardly even put put money and food on the table trying to get them to buy stocks so they can earn a commission. So we didn't want to be a commission driven, so we formed a fee-only advisory firm. Um, and then we formed a not-for-profit. So like this tour here in Jackson, we'll be in Jackson for the entire week. And uh, we're using our own, I'm, I'm using pretty much my own funds to fund the outreach, but then the town hall meeting is sponsored by the Campaign for Black Male Achievement. So we go out and we get the funds. So individuals who are low income, that who, who do need a, that extra leg up, the bill's already been paid. So we got the funds so they can just come and get free education and information. I think the people need that, man. Right. Now let's move on and talk about this prepaid credit, what is it, credit? Prepaid debit card. Yeah, because the Su Susan Orman thing, there yeah. are quite a few people who have this yeah. going for them. So what's your intake on well, that? They got, well, f there is a movement of these financial predators. They go after individuals who are primarily low income. And Susie Orman recently came out with her approved card. Uh, I've been going, if you can just Google Russell Simmons and Ryan Mack, you'll see many articles of when I've written against him and been on yes, CNN. Yes, because you do, do um, uh, articles on the Huffington Post. Huffington Post, yeah, yes. Huffington Post. And a Grill. variety of others. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, we go after these folks. I guess I've been kind of known as the unofficial watchdog. Um, <laughs> okay. Actually, the, the Rush Card actually contacted me the other day to talk. I don't know what they wanted to talk about. Um, we've been offered the sponsorship deals from various prepaid companies. Um, Susie Orman emailed me. I guess they want me to shut up. Um, <laughs> But I'm not going to shut up because as far as I'm concerned, I just don't like when people pimp poor people. Exactly. You know, I mean, the low income individuals, they uh, individuals who are out there who are low income and in poverty, almost one out of two people in America are either in poverty or close to it. 
So, um, you know, those individuals who can afford the least to pay money to use their own money, and that's what a prepaid debit card does. The REST card essentially makes you put money on this debit card. It charges you to do so, and then they have additional fees. The Susie Orman card has as much as 21 additional fees uh, that charges. And Russell Simmons, the same way, they have a lot of additional fees that essentially eats away at all your earnings and your savings. So the advantage of getting one of those cards... There's none. There is none. No, there is none. They have additional, they have things, and what we're doing, we're going to have another movement. It's coming after this tour. After this Let's Talk More Action tour is done, we're going to have another movement that promotes the real way. But the problem with promoting the real safe way of going to get a secured card, a free secured card that actually helps you establish credit, which the prepaid debit cards do not. Oh, it's a free not. secured card. There are free debit, free secured cards. You can go to, you can go to credit, a smarterchoice.org to go to credit unions. 80% of credit unions offer free secured cards. They offer free debit cards. You can go to your local community banks many times offer free cards. The joinbankon.org movement. They offer these banks that get individuals to be able to get bank accounts. Many folks will say, well, well, 60 million folks can't get bank accounts. We have walked formerly incarcerated brothers. We've walked those who have been out of the system and bounced checks and have awful credit. We've walked homeless individuals down to credit unions and gotten them debit cards that are free with no fees attached to them. So this whole adage that you can't get uh, this, uh, you have to use this prepaid debit card is just false. Oh my goodness. So a lot of people don't realize that. Well, the reason is because they have so much money behind them promoting this garbage to the people. Um, but what we're going to do is we have truth on our side. So as long as you have the truth, we can fight. You're so, right. And long as you have that passion exactly. to help people. Exactly. So we've gotten the CUNA and FDIC and the uh, uh, Operation Hope and a lot of individuals on board. We're talking to National Action Network to do a national movement to have to, to declare a war on financial predators, check cash in places, financial predators, refinancipation loans, payday loans, cash advances, rent -to centers, uh, prepaid debit cards. We are going to, the pawn shops so that are so now they the are banks. more like predators on those yeah. particular places that you just named. They're financial predators. We are going to declare war on because those. Because they keep you more in debt they keep you, actually help they you. They etch people into a permanent underclass of society that puts a cap on their upper level of, of wealth that they can ever accumulate because it does not allow them to accumulate wealth, establish credit, and get back into the system. It just nips away at all their savings. If you're, low, if you're a low-income family, you don't have enough money to spend money to use your own money. Right. So it's time to put into these oh, things. Oh, spend money to use your to own use money. To use your own money, and that's what some of those. That's what the prepaid, prepaid debit cards do. I mean, these refund anticipation loans charge as much as two, three hundred percent interest. So it, it, we're going to declare war on them, and I think that if, with enough push, we can have we can cause a dent. Because I've been doing a lot by myself, but we need a national movement of right, education. Right. Exactly. It's good when one decided to get the idea and start doing it, but right. it's good to have more people. To come none, along none of with us you. is as strong as all of us. Exactly. There you go. Now, um, I want you to make mention again, even though we are going to take a break in about a minute and a half, mm -hmm. and we are going to make mention of it again, but I want you to expound just briefly upon Thursday. What are some of the things that y'all would be talking about? Well, on Thursday, we're going to be giving tangible solutions about financial literacy on how to become fiscally responsible. We're going to give tangible solutions on how individuals can reform education, tangible solutions on how we can actually address incarceration. Um, we're going to give tangible solutions on how folks can start their own businesses and get out there and right. be entrepreneurs. So, and then we're going to highlight those local org organizations in the area that are doing the work that people can get support in all those areas, financial literacy, education, incarceration, employment. Um, so when people walk away from Thursday, from when they go, come out to Jackson, 1400 uh, Joy Lynch Road, they're going to be able to get information about exactly what they have to do. 30-day action plans, uh, train-the-trainer programs based on our, our, our tour curriculum living in the village. Uh, to come out, we want to videotape. Go to letstalkmoreaction.info. We vi videotape in black and Hispanic businesses that are successful so we can help them get exposure and circulate the dollar more effectively to the community. It's time for some real deal solutions. I think on Thursday they'll be able to get it. All right. Well, we... One more break, and that would be it. Okay. <laughs> and and plus, we want to find out what time. I don't know if you have the time that it's sort and what are seven to nine. Seven to nine. From seven to nine and on do, Thursday. Will they have to register or whatever to come out? And well, all they, of that. if they go to Let's Talk More Action, it's free to come. Oh, Everybody okay. can just come. You know, okay. let us come. I mean, don't I'll, have to do any registration or anything. No, no, just come out. Okay. Well, y'all, we will be right back.
my guest today is Ryan Mack, and he is educating us on financial freedom. Now, we only have about a minute, mm -hmm. and you can um, especiate upon whatever you want to during this one minute. Mm -hmm. But again, the meeting is Thursday, March the 15th. Mm -hmm. Now, you are going to be doing something throughout before the 15th. Yeah, every single day we'll be throughout the community giving workshops. So from uh, Monday night through uh, Friday morning, we'll be giving financial literacy workshops for the community. Um, these will not necessarily be open to the public. Oh, They'll okay, be towards gotcha. to captive audiences. But we urge anyone, if they have, uh, especially on Wednesday, we might have a slot, so reach out to us. Uh, go to lesstalkaction.info. You'll get information about the tour. Send an email up. There's a contact slot on this. Send an email to us and if they want additional information on when we'll be. Uh, we'll, we'll be coming back to Jackson soon, so uh, just send information. Please pick up a book. Yeah, now where can your book be? They can go to Amazon.com. They can go to Barnes & Noble. Um, and again, if they want to be a trainer, trainer, go to LessTalkMoreAction.info. Pick up that book and then and sign up. Uh, become a trainer and then they can fill out information to become a trainer that will send them information we will send them a packet and that book actually turns into a curriculum where they can teach financial literacy to their family the best way to learn something is to teach it and that's how the, the trainer trainer model is one of the best in our communities that's most effective okay well Ryan Mack it has been a plum pleasing pleasure thank you for having to me meet you I tell you it has been very educational thank you very and to know that you have written a book and co-author books and you're on CNN <laughs> writing for the Huffington, Huffington Post mm -hmm. dot com and quite a few other things. Yeah. You were, um, what was it, chosen as the 40, the 40 top under 40, 40 under 40. Yeah. And it was good, man. It was, it was a Achieving fun time. award, I think, something yeah. like that. We did the Wendy Williams show and everything. Oh, did you? You were on Wendy? Yeah. Well, I hope, I wonder did I miss that. Normally, <laughs> I am one of her biggest fans. Oh, really? You know, yeah. Wendy is a she, trip. She up. didn't get me to say, how you doing? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't say it. I did not say she it. She didn't get you to say that. No, no, I didn't say it. <laughs> so you have been around. Yeah. You going around and you taking the message. We, we take it the, to the, the people. The trail is that people will be able to receive it, to get Absolutely. it, receive it, and to support you and what you and your group are You can doing. see me on television, but you'll see me in the hood. That's my in favorite the place. And the good thing, again, you make mention a couple of times about the, incarcerate, the, the incarcerator yeah. when they get out. And even when they are in, I guess you are still able to Absolutely. educate. Them. Yeah, I mean, so that's, that's a good thing when you can certainly educate them as well because it's not easy when you get out of jail mm -mm. and you don't know what to do and then you find yourself back in. Mm -mm. We got to reduce recidivism. This right. revolving door, this prison industrial complex, man, it's, it's uh, something that we need to address. But we address it not from the systematic perspective, which is the, which is important, but from the perspective of personal responsibility. And I think that's what we that's what our focus is. Okay. Well, thanks a trio for, Thank for tuning having in. Me. I really tuning in. Thanks a trio for coming out and uh, educating us. Thank you. Hopefully, you'll be back in the future and to educate us again. I will absolutely. And let us know what's going on in your neck of the woods. All right. Thank All you. All right. Beloved, thanks a trio for tuning in. And remember that a merry heart do it good like a medicine. Therefore, Lady take a Walker little time shit. out of your day and have a whole life. Thank you.